Hey folks, it's Art Wolf. Welcome. We have an unboxing today of a brand new product. This is a buddy unboxing because I didn't order the new version of Deadly Northern Lights from Thin Red Line Games. This is the second game in the 1985 series, which began with 1985 Under an Iron Sky, and we can see that this is Module 2 Second Echelon. Now, unlike their other second printing, this one actually had a lot of uh, changes and updates to it, uh, which the others really have not. There hasn't been a second printing of Sacred Oil yet. And I didn't want to spend the, you know, probably $200 with shipping it would cost to uh, get this thing shipped in. Now's not, not an awesome time for me, as you'll know if you've been watching the Monday streams. So, I mean, everything's fine, but, you know, I didn't have the spare money to blow on this. So, uh, we, we do have a buddy unboxing of it, though, so we can take a look together at what's in here. Blank box back, which is, I think, pretty typical for Thin Red Line games. I think all their stuff has blank box backs. So, let's pull off the shrink wrap and take a look here. It's going to say second echelon, and I'm not sure that I'm going to necessarily be able to identify with a visual inspection what the differences are. Now these are coarser. This is an oversized box. Um, it's roughly the same size box that you would get um, from a GDW flat, except that it's, you know, not very flat. It's, it's quite large. So we have a D20, just one, just one D20 it looks like. One D20, so far anyway, and it's a pretty nice looking D20, I have to say. Uh, we have a bunch of stuff. We have a second D20, which is, again, pretty nice looking D20s. And if you didn't notice, made in Italy. And you get a bang of baggies here, which from these guys, I would just assume them not bother to include. Um, because it's not like you're going to be have enough to sort the whole game out into say, the seven baggies that we gave you. All right, so we have two booklets, Rules of Play and Deadly Northern Lights. So I think Mutually Assured Destruction is the combined game, I think, with this and um, Under an Iron Sky. So this is Scandinavia, obviously. We have a 44-page rule book, relatively small print, black and white. Not seeing any color anyway. Um, not super small, but I mean, you know, small, medium small, let's, let's say. Uh, and this is in, I don't know if it's A4 or A5, the European paper format that you tend to see. It's, a, it's, um, it's taller in ratio to its width than an American booklet would be, um, which is, you know, just a thing. Product of Italy, if we didn't say that already. Uh, so this is a pretty detailed game system, and it has its roots in the old SPI, The Next War, which is a Jim Dunnigan design. I believe Mark Herman was the developer on that, and it was an interesting looking game even at the time, and these guys really played it and mastered it, and then decided they were going to take some of those ideas and develop their own game with them. So this is the scenario booklet. This is also 44 pages, um, and we have designer's notes and quite a few additional rules, might I say. So additional rules here could be in effect during a Deadly Northern Lights scenario. I don't know that the that the main rule book should really be considered a series rule book, but there's three games in the series, so maybe that's a good idea, I don't know. Uh, the Gates of Fire, scenario one, map D. Not a very small scenario, as you can see. There's a Each of these lines represents a counter, so I have fooled a very little bit with Under an Iron Sky, uh, but not very much. So uh, I would prefer not to make, um, and even that was a little while ago, so I'd prefer not to make rules statements that may, will make me look stupid. So the Baltic will tell scenario two on map G and the LOC map. We can, we'll look at the LOC map in a few minutes. I think the LOC map is basically something that they're brought in from... Um, from Sacred Oil, which is volume three in the series. Uh, scenario three, Against a Sea of Troubles, map H and the LOC map. I think Sacred Oil has some scenarios that are just played on the LOC map. Uh, so this one, scenario four, Black Becomes the Sun's Beams, is played on three maps plus the LOC map. LOC is Lines of Communication, I believe in this case. Uh, campaign one, the Nordic Balance, area of play, everything. And this is a big game. 
uh, a big footprint game, uh, as are all these games in this particular series from Thin Red Line Games. You can see the large numbers of um, NATO and Warsaw Pact and neutral units. We've got some designers' notes by Fabrizio, Fabrizio Vianello. Developers' notes by Anthony Morfitt. Developers' notes by Ulf Kron. Okay. We have a whole bunch of... Let me push the maps to one side for a second, of which there's uh, several. Uh, we have a whole bunch of play aids. So these, this series uh, sort of puts, gives you this play aid booklet rather than like just 70 cards to put everything on. So most of the charts and tables that you need are actually in this booklet. There's probably another one of those. Um, there's air superiority areas for for this one. This looks like the NATO version of that. Here's the Warsaw Pact naval display. There's Warsaw Pact bases. Here's the other player's aid booklet. Uh, here's another air superiority areas card. So uh, this is identical to the other one, so probably they're not color-coded and one side gets one and the other side gets the other one. Here's the NATO naval display. NATO base is two of two, NATO base is one of two. It's got the flags on there too, which is pretty cool. Um, we've got counters. Let's take a look at the counters next. So, uh, Thin Red Line's counters are pretty nice. They're on a, I'd say, medium heavyweight white core stock. Um, and they are coated with what feels like sort of a matte finish plastic that gives them a really nice feel. However, it does mean that they tear out of the sheets fairly messily. And if you are um, going to punch and clip one of the, or punch one of these games, I highly recommend clipping the corners on the counters. Um, so we have a sheet that's all markers, and they're you know. These are not fancy markers. Um, however, uh, they're also not ambiguous markers, right? The fatigue markers say fatigue, the damage markers say damage, the supply markers say supply, the on patrol markers say on patrol. Um, so I, I would rather have plain white markers, and a, a lot of games do this actually, where they'll put their markers in white so that they, or yellow or whatever, so that they can be easily told apart from the units. Um, which is something else I, I approve I, I approve of. So let's put that there. Uh, here's our counter sheet five, which looks like it's got some Warsaw Pact units and some miscellaneous um, British and American ships, plus some more markers and some other markers, which are mines. Um, it looks like uh, convoys too. I think the convoy text on these markers is a bit hard to read. Um, yeah, so there's Convoy 1s and Convoy 3s, and those those are pretty hard to read, since you need to know the number. Here's Counter Sheet 4. It looks like we're counting down here. Uh, this is Warsaw Pact stuff. Looks like we have East Germans. We have a whole bunch of Soviet stuff, including ships and air uh, air assets, and some, and some ground forces as well. Here's another... Uh, Warsaw Pact counter sheet, which looks like it is all Soviets. And I note that um, there are core HQs here, which might not be mirrored on the NATO side. And the ground units are battalions or regiments. Um, the Or brigades. There's some brigades too. And actually, there's a couple divisions. So they may, th those divisions may break down. I'm not sure. So here we are into the two sheets of NATO stuff. Here we have British and American stuff, along with what looks to be West Germans. Um, none of those are marked here, but the flags are on the counters, so you can you can not have to stress out about who's who. Um, here we have Canadians, Danes, uh, looks like Dutch, uh, Norwegians, and Swedes. Okay, now Denmark, of course, is in. Deadly Northern is in uh, the first game in the series, Under an Iron Sky. So we, that we don't have quite as much Danish stuff here is not that surprising. You can see we have some some Finns as well. Um, and whoever these guys are, I cannot quite make out what that flag is. I think these are uh, joint NATO units is what that looks like. Okay, so and then of course we got a couple of British down here in the corner. So a lot of, a lot of stuff in here. So 
Let's look at the line of lines of communication map first. All right, so this is basically a full size map right here, not quite maybe, uh, but this is essentially the entire uh, Eastern Hemisphere. So we have on the one hand you've got the American East Coast and its lines of communication up to Scandinavia for this game, around Africa to the Middle East and through the Mediterranean to the Middle East, and then over here you have the U.S. West Coast. Uh, and it's lines of communication to East Asia and uh, Polynesia down here. So I'm not sure if Polynesia is the right word I'm looking for, but the, the islands. Um, <clears throat> so this is a, you know, a good chunk of the planet. And there's also a little continental U.S. box. So you can go from CONUS 1 to CONUS 2, which is CONUS 1 is U.S. East Coast and CONUS 2 is U.S. West Coast. So you can either do that on land or you can go around through the Panama Canal, it looks like. Um, so that's actually pretty neat. Um, and, and this, from memory, this looks very similar to the, the LOC map that was featured in um, Sacred Oil. Now the regular maps, there are five. There are three full-sized regular maps, and we'll take a look at uh, at least one of them um, so that you can get a sense of what this looks like. And then there's two smaller maps. Um, this is what looks like the Northern Cape of Norway. Indeed it is. And there, none of these are what we would call standard-sized maps in the U.S. Um, they're all kind of weird sizes, um, which, you know, makes sense because of the way the differences in the way things are printed in Europe versus in the U.S. Um, and this is one of the off map sizes, too. Um, so it's it's I think feels longer than a uh, American map of similar size would be. And then we've got another one that is very similar. This looks like it is the extension of. Denmark off the map from under an iron sky. So here you have uh, Odin's and here's the here's Copenhagen right here and you can go up to Sweden as the case may be. Um, and you've got you know some see me see if you can see this uh, port of Rostock here East Germany uh, port of Lubeck here in West Germany. Uh, so this this will looks to me like it just adds on to the north side of under an iron sky and then this would be the southern end of Sweden. So uh, the maps uh, are the same style as those in Under an Iron Sky and Sacred Oil and for, for what it's worth I think they look very nice from an artistic standpoint. Uh, nor do I think they're, nor do I see anything that would obviously make them harder to read which is going to be the first problem I have with with war game maps when they're they're difficult to read. I, I don't really see that there is that problem here. So there are some rules changes to this edition, um, which you can, I'm pretty sure, download the new rules from Thin Red Line's website. But there are a decent number of changes to the counters, and of course there's a whole new map as well. So, uh, and, and I believe it's already sold out uh, at Thin Red Line games, as is usual for Thin Red Line stuff. Um, so for those of us who didn't get in on this, if we decide we need it, we need to round it up on the secondary market, which is going to be difficult and expensive insofar as it will even be possible. I tend not to see these games even turn up on the secondary market, and when they do, they are expensive, right? As in the, if it's $200, you're getting a very good price expensive. So. Um, so for those who wanted to see the new version of Deadly Northern Lights, not radically different from a visual inspection to the previous version, which again I do have, but I didn't order this one, so thanks very much for uh, shooting this my way. Um, name, you, you all know who I'm talking about, I don't want to say their name for obvious reasons on the, the, uh, on the, the video. Uh, so thanks for watching, if you've enjoyed the video or found it useful, please do give it a thumbs up. Please do help support the channel. I'd like to give a shout out to the patrons of Ardwolf Slayer, without whom this and other types of content would not be possible. Once again, thanks for watching, and until next time, happy wargaming.